<laughs> oh, it's time. So this is the first part of a four-part series, and we're going to do something a little different, a little indulgent, if you will. So the I've got the Aorus NVMe Gen 4 SSD. It's a two terabyte PCI Express Gen 4 SSD, so pretty obviously this machine before me, it's going to be a PCI Express 4 machine, right? Yeah. So if one of these is good, two has to be better, right? Well, I'm, I'm a little ahead of the curve here. You can see I've got it installed here. It's actually the second one. This thing has four terabytes of PCI Express 4 storage. This is a uh, Ryzen 9 3900X based machine. This is my new dev monster powerhouse. Let's get started. All right, so what are we rocking for this system? Well, first of all, this is a relatively compact fractal meshify case. It's a full-size ATX case. Doesn't really leave a lot of room for, you know, if you're gonna go nuts with, with cooling or whatever. We've got the very, very awesome Noctua U12A. This cooler is beast mode for Ryzen 9. It is really, you don't have to go aftermarket cooling. It works fine with the box cooler. But this cooler is quieter and will deliver a little bit better performance without quote unquote overclocking per se. This is Trident Z Neo. This memory from G-Skill is designed for Ryzen. This is 64 gigabytes. The uh, Trident Z Neo, you know, most of the time you'll have a 16 or a 32 gigabyte kit. Eight gig kits, 3600, 16, 16, 16, 36 timings at 1.35 volts. It's good stuff. It's cherry picked by G-Skill. You know, don't fret, but for me, 64 gigabytes. My only complaint really is that the Meshify doesn't have a front panel USB-C. I've got an extra USB-C header on this motherboard and a USB 3.0 header that I'm not really using, but I do have the two front USB 3 ports. I've also got uh, the Aorus Master in here from Gigabyte. This is one of the best boards this generation for X570. It's gonna let me run my two PCI Express 4.0 SSDs, no problem. I've also got a Gigabyte RTX 2080 Ti. Now the 2080 Ti is something that I bought at retail. This particular 3900X also came for retail, but AMD also sent me a 3900X, so I've got quite a few processors floating around in the mix here. Uh, the case actually came from Newegg as well, as did the power supply, which I think is a Seasonic, since something in the seven or 800 watt variety. It's a little older, but it is an effective power supply nonetheless. And this is my dev box. So the first uh, in this series is basically like, you don't really need a RAID Zero PCI Express 4.0 SSD but gosh darn it, it is nice to have. You also don't really need 12 cores for a dev box, but if you're running a lot of virtual machines, it is nice to be able to do background tasks without anything interrupting the front. But as you'll see, even a Ryzen 5 3600 for a lot of your compile tasks, because the compiler is really not super multi-threaded, it's not gonna make a huge difference. But depending on what you're doing, you know, we're gonna take a look at Unreal workloads. Actually, because this is the first video, I'm sort of curious what sort of workloads you want to see. So what kicked all this off is Steve from Gamers Nexus. We got to talking. I've done some experiments. I've created some RAM disks. I've done some of my own testing with GCC. We're going to be running Linux on this thing. We're using MD for the RAID. If you want to run Windows, that's fine. You can use StoreMI to RAID 0 your PCI Express 4 SSDs. You don't have to have P RAID 0 PCI Express 4 SSDs, but it's nice. I like it because it's nice. And if you spend a lot of time on your computer and you want your computer to do things really quickly, just go ahead and get RAID 0 NVMe SSDs. These SSDs, these Aorus 2 terabyte SSDs are pretty good. And four terabytes of flash, especially four terabytes of NVMe is nuts. So yeah, I don't, I mean, I don't have time to screw around. So RAID 0 NVMe with MD. Yeah, this is a really nice Linux box. Plus with 12 cores, I get enough horsepower to run virtual machines. If I want to, I can pop in another graphics card and play games, but with Proton, it's really less necessary than it used to be, so I'll be fine with my single 2080 Ti for now, so 
Maybe if I wanted to run an open source GPU, I would be better off with like a Vega 64. Navi is coming. It's not quite there yet, but it's coming. I might do an add-in 10 gig card. Now I could move up to an Aorus Extreme, which is an even more expensive motherboard for built-in 10 gig, but I can also just add in a Quantia 10 gig NIC for around $100. So why don't I just do that? Now this machine will let you do development and background tasks really quickly. A lot of the common things with, uh, a lot of the common things with like web development and Unreal and stuff like that is that you're working and you know you make a commit to the project and maybe you're going to run linting tests or integration tests or something like that and you're not going to do it on a, on a dev box you're actually going to do those integration tests on your own machine so you might have a tool like vagrant or kubernetes or docker or something that's going to kick off a lot of virtual machines run through a bunch of tests download a bunch of files it's nice to be able to do that without realizing that your machine is doing anything at all in the background. Like all of that's running in the background and all of that insanity is happening and your editor doesn't slow down at all. Me personally, I like to work in VI for my editor of choice, for my integrated development environment of choice, if you will. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to take a look at Visual Studio Code, which is not bad and cross-platform. I feel like a lot of people in our forum use Visual Studio Code, so... Maybe that's not right, or maybe it is. If you have something that you work on that you want to show off for video two and three, you know, I'll admit I'm a little bit out of my depth with the Unreal Engine, but we've got some Unreal developers on the forum. And so I'm looking at like things like, can we do a distributed compile job? How quickly can we get up and running? Does the, the RAID 0 NVMe make a huge difference for Unreal type workloads? Then, you know, if you've got something that you do for your day job, especially an open source project, Let's take a look. Also, my to-do list is Chromium. I'm like running this through this thing with, with Chromium just to see how that goes, but I'm not sure that's really representative of a real world, you know, blue collar, I'm, I'm earning my salt doing development. But uh, we'll see, we'll run through some tests. But I first wanted to show off the build and what we were working with, with the dual RAID 0 NVMe. And yes, yes, I am absolutely, it is not necessary. I am a crazy person but I wanted it. So there you go. All right, check it out. We're in the lab. I've got my 3900X system set up here with our RAID 0 gigabyte NVMe. It's our Aorus Master motherboard and the Octua U12S. It's a really cool setup, 12 cores, 24 threads. It's actually kind of impressive. Nine gigabytes per second on Linux. Now granted, I think for, if we're just talking about compile workloads, 3900X versus like a 3600, six cores, there's not gonna be a lot of difference because it's not super multi-threaded. Now you can do like make dash J six or 12 or 24, depending on your processor. But most of the time as a developer, you're not really doing that. Really, you, you could be running integration tests or unit tests or linting or um, doing like vagrant, uh, like uh, spinning up a virtual machine to run through a bunch of tests with uh, something like Vagrant or Ansible or some other containerization system. And this level of NVMe performance basically means that it can run in the background and you're not gonna notice. This is a nice to have, this is not a requirement. And to be sure, like you don't, you would be hard pressed to notice this except in these really super heavy demanding workloads. But for me, I love it. Nine gigabytes per second is utterly insane. I don't like waiting on the computer, I don't like waiting really waiting for anything like it's like you can't keep up it's like, get out nine gigabytes per second i even put this up against our liquid hhhl which is a 1.5 terabyte you know pci express by eight super high performance enterprise grade flash device now to be sure that liquid hhhl is a little bit more enterprise and a little bit less ghetto than just you know am4 raid zero of pci express 4 but PCI Express 4 is no joke. One of our NVMe is directly connected to the CPU. The other goes through the chipset. I also tried another configuration where uh, one of the, or both NVMEs were in a PCI Express by eight, PCI Express 4.0 uh, compatible PCI Express by eight break, breakout card so that my graphics card is running it by eight. And then my slot is really, my secondary slot is really running it by four by four with both NVMe on there. And uh, it's a slightly, very slightly faster directly through to the CPU uh, versus one through the chipset and one through the CPU. But again, this is just, it's just insanity. We get the full Pharonix benchmarks 
and the benchmarks even had like a single PCI Express 4 like Corsair thing, but we're getting better than 2x scaling on this particular system, which is just... I love this level of performance. I love being, I mean, nine gigabytes per second, I think is faster than the RAM in the machine that I had, like when I went to the, like the Core 2 Duo, or like, yeah, I think the Core, Core 2 Duo, uh, that's getting up there to be like the same speed as RAM from like several generations ago, which is, it's like I'm gonna run a VM and kick off an Ansible script and compile this thing, and this system's just gonna shrug it off. And it's AM4. That's crazy. Now, for the Linux setup, it's just good old MD, multi-disc. There's nothing special about it. You can set it up directly from the Fedora installer. It's no big deal. On Windows, for the Premiere testing, well, that's store MI. That's AMD's drivers. You gotta go into the UEFI. You gotta enable the NVMe RAID. But that's the same setup that I did, like, last year. Like, same tutorial. It still applies on Ryzen 3000. Not a problem. Oh, and for our other test comparison system, that's a Threadripper 32 core system. Now that's gonna work a little bit better with the Liquid HHHL because that version of Threadripper does not have PCI Express 4, but there's a new Threadripper coming, I think, pretty sure. And if not, we'll all just go epic. Turns out those giant copper slugs actually help in terms of acting as a giant thermal capacitor. I don't know, I just like being excited about things that go fast. That's all, that's all, that's all, that's all I really care about. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna wait. 0.5 less seconds on this. Yeah. Oh, and if this is too big for you, it is available in a mini form factor. This is the Dr. Zaber mini PC. This has got the Gigabyte Aorus ITX 570 in here. This also runs a RAID 0 NVMe PCI Express 4 SSD setup, no problem. It's got two PCI Express 4 NVMe's. You will have to give up your 12 core because this case doesn't have enough cooling for the 12 core, uh, well, unless you go for a smaller graphics card. If you go for something like the uh, Radeon Nano, then you can use a, uh, a small 120 millimeter closed loop cooler for your CPU and just barely be able to do a 12 core CPU in the Dr. Zaber machine. But for me, eight cores is enough because I get to keep that 2080 graphics card. But look, this tiny, tiny dev box of raw, just, just raw power. Eight cores, 12 cores. So as you can see, the performance of this machine for a lot of those kind of tasks is monstrous, utterly monstrous. Not too surprising, really. I mean, you run through the Ferronics test suite, the couple test cases, and yeah, it's pretty nuts. It's, it's pretty crazy, but four terabytes of flash, four terabytes of NVMe flash, saturating the bus, going nuts. Yes, that's what we're all about here at level one. This is only the first of, of a three-part series you, if you want to see some, like, if you want to make some suggestions for part two and three, you better get to the forum because they're in process now. I'm hoping that they're going to be out uh, next week and the week after. So like one week, two week, three week kind of a deal and with RAID zero SSDs in tow. So if you have a job that requires a lot of reading or PostgreSQL or MySQL testing, then it's going to be nuts. It's going to be completely nuts with those SSDs. But uh, yeah, give me some hints or pointers or let me know what you want to see in the forum at level one. I'm Wendell. I'm signing out and I'll see you there.